So here, it's really simple. I'm gonna go, hill and golly rider, and you're gonna go, hill and golly. Right in the, you gotta go low, you gotta go low, you're right. I'm gonna go, hill and golly rider. You know, don't sound like you're dead, man. Have some life in your body, man. Hi, welcome, welcome. This is the shed, this is where the writing happens. And today we're going to be doing a really interesting little thing. This is a creative writing workshop then. And we're going to be looking at a really interesting task which looks at different elements of how we feel as a person and looking at ways in which as a writer we can use our own life experience and our own personalities and our understanding of that to create characters who feel very, very three-dimensional. You probably want to know who this character is first of all. So my name is Johnny and I'm a teacher. You can tell from the baldness and the beardedness. Um, but especially a writing teacher these days, and I do lots of writing myself as well, so I enjoy doing this sort of thing. Um, why are we going to focus on this then? I think sometimes writing can be a really enjoyable process, and it can be something that allows you to understand yourself in different ways. Sometimes the writing that we do in school helps us to do that, but sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes the writing that we do in school might be there mostly to develop an understanding of grammar or to be able to demonstrate different things. We write different things for different purposes and at different times. For today, the purpose of the writing that we're going to be doing is really for your own enjoyment. It doesn't need to be appraised, it doesn't need to be sent off, it doesn't need to be ticked or crossed. It's purely for you to enjoy writing it and by doing that you'll develop your own craft in new ways anyway. So we're going to be thinking about characters, really. Sometimes, when we start writing, we have ideas in our head about what our characters might be, but when we write them down, they seem a little bit two-dimensional. They don't really live as people. So there are lots of different things and different approaches that writers take to create, create characters who mean something. And one thing that you can do is breathe life into them by giving them characteristics and experiences of people who really exist, you know, in the real world. And one of the ways in which we're going to do that today is by thinking about ourselves. Now we're going to start by doing a little bit of sketching actually, because sometimes it can be helpful to sketch and write. So I'm gonna tilt you over so that you can see my notepad a little bit. One second. Okay, so we're going to be thinking about ourselves and about the way in which we can turn different sides of our own personalities into characters. Now we are living through quite curious times and I know it can be very strange and probably the side of our personalities that's showing now might be very different from the side we would normally be showing. Lots of people might be feeling a little bit more uneasy or anxious. You're not used to being spending all of this time at home, you might feel more cooped up. The other side might be that you find this whole thing like very peculiar and exciting. There's no right way to feel with things like this. But what's really helpful is to understand the way that we feel. Because understanding ourselves allows us to understand a lot more. The one thing that should be consistent in your life is you're going to be there with yourself, aren't you? So understanding yourself is pretty important. Now, I'm going to think about three different sides of my personality. And what I'm going to try and do is to draw them as if they were a person. Now that sounds weird, but you'll get it, I think, when I start. One side of my personality is that I will always try to crack a joke. I'll always try to be funny. Sometimes at inappropriate times, you know, some like you'll be at a funeral or something and I'll just have a voice in my head which is noticing that the vicar has still got like breakfast in his beard and I'll find it so funny that I'll want to tell people, even though it's not necessarily the right time to do so. So there'll be a character who is always just popping up and kind of, no matter what, they will inappropriately sometimes try to be funny. So I'm going to make them a quite comical character. So I'm thinking, I've always found sideburns quite funny. I don't need to be a brilliant artist for this, and nor do you. Although if you are, good for you. There we are. I'm going to make him have massive sideburns, but no kind of beard to connect them or might make it straggly and odd. I like the idea that it's a character who kind of thinks that they are a lot funnier than they are as well, which 
as sometimes I'm sure the way I am. So they're going to be smiling quite broadly. And uh, a funny bit of hair. They just think that they are the life of the party. I'm going to make them pot bellied. Now, sometimes just as you're drawing, you'll start to get more and more ideas anyway. So I'm thinking I've got this one character who's just there hopping up, trying to see the positive, but that's not always what people want. That can be a bit annoying sometimes. You may notice he's got beaks for feet, but we'll go with that. So this person is one of the characters here. Now, another side will be... Um, I can be quite annoying. I can be quite giddy, actually. Like my housemate sometimes will find me just giggling to myself, which is um, obviously weird. So I'm going to have a character who's kind of like a bit of a, I don't know, maybe like a toddler or a dog. I need an animal or a character who's just always, like, annoying. So I'm thinking I might have... I'm going to make them like a little girl like this who just pops up and she's going to have weird little ponytail things going on here. So I don't need to think about her outfit and I don't need to think about her appearance massively. But as I'm doing this it will start... Oh, okay. Now because my drawing is so bad she looks absolutely terrifying but I quite like that too. So I'm going to just put a little note to myself that every now and again there'll just be a little clue that she's a horror character or that something and she like tiptoes into being really strange um okay and then i'm gonna think another side of my personality um hmm. i can get angry sometimes i can really get angry sometimes but then i try not to let that out so Maybe I'll have a character who is sometimes struggling with that. So what I might do, I don't really know what I'm drawing here. I'm just drawing a circle at this point. There's some eyes. There's a start. Oh, I know what I could do. So I've watched this TV show and I've seen a character who it kind of reminds me of. I'll not name them because I don't want you to go and watch it. But I'm going to give them a moustache like that character. And I'm going to make them have... They're going to be dressed quite formally. I know that already just from this. I'll give them a little tie. Okay, so maybe not that formally. Okay. And what's going to happen here then is they're going to try to be nice all the time, but little things will annoy them. I'm going to use a different pen for that. Little things annoy them. Now, I can imagine that because I actually feel that too. Like, I could have, when I'm teaching, I could have someone do something really awful. Like, if somebody smashed a window, I would be less annoyed than if they just did this. That drives me crazy. So that might make this character go a little bit mad. Little things annoy them. Um, and maybe... Mm. Oh, I like them to have one massive eyebrow, because I have that too. I think that's quite a funny feature. What an odd little trio. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to start thinking about things that these characters might say. Not like their catchphrases, but just what they might say if you bumped into them in the street. Now this one's going to be very Yorkshire-y, and he's going to say, Oh, right. Bow. I'm actually going to put all reet. All reet, pal. And they're going to say, you'll never guess what I've heard. Because they're going to be a huge gossip too. You'll never guess what I've heard. And I've got a phrase which I've heard somebody say before and I find it really funny. It's when no one is laughing but they think that something's still really funny, so they just keep repeating, it is, isn't it? It is, it is, isn't it? So I'm going to put, it is, isn't it? 
if you speak in a different accent to me, obviously that's fine. Feel free to use your accent, feel free to use your dialect. If you're thinking about languages you might use at home, if you don't speak English at home, but you do in school, feel free to use any or all of your languages. It is, isn't it? I'm going to make him always have a bag. I'm just thinking that would be quite funny. I'll call it bag of tricks. Okay. Now she is going to be giddy and annoying. And she's just going to be a bit like a I want it now sort of character. This is how I feel when I, for example, want to eat a lot of crisps. Little things annoy them. They're trying to be polite, but they keep failing because their temper is so short. So they might say things like, I've told you this once already. And I think they'd have a voice like that. I told you this. Now, we've not got great characters here, but we've got a really good start. Now, for me, I know about these characters a little bit already, because when I think about what they might do, I can think about what I would do in these situations. So if I was in this mood where I'm really like overexcited and giddy, I need to think about how I might feel inside. I might need to think about the sort of things I might say. For me, I might think back to when I was a little kid as well. So she is a child character. So I might think to when I was a child. Now for you, if you are a child, when you're, if you've got an adult character, you might think about adults you know who have these kind of characteristics. How might they react? If this person is a bit like a teacher you know, or a family member, maybe use them as characters. Same with this guy. So this is mine. If I was to use one word for each person, I would say this person is merry. I'd say this person is giddy. And I'd say this person is peeved, easily peeved. Now that's just a little starting point. This isn't writing though, so what are we going to do with this? Let's see. Okay, so we've got our characters here then. Now, we've got our merry guy, our giddy girl, and our peeved gentleman. That's how I'm just thinking of them in my head. I've not really thought of names yet. Maybe that'll be a different session. Now, our writing today, it could take whichever form you're in the mood for. You might want to express this as a poem, if that's the kind of thing that you prefer to write. You might want to do it as a story. It could work quite well as a play script as well. But what we're really focusing on is the skill of building characters here. And the way that you want to do that here is really down to, down to you. Go with what you know could work as a comic actually, couldn't it, with characters like these. This is a scenario which is going to start us off. So, three strangers meet in the park. Something odd has happened. Who speaks first and what is the weird event? So for us as the writer, we need to think about an event. Now we're doing this really as a little practice exercise, aren't we? This is quite playful. So what I'm going to get you to do is think of five things w which would be very strange to happen in the park. The weirder, the better. I'm going to think of one, and then I'm going to leave you with some thinking time. So I think a thing which could be very, very strange is if maybe like there was an ice cream van in the park. But instead of giving out ice cream, they were giving out something really unusual. What could they give out that was unusual? What would be very disruptive? Explosives? That would be unusual. Maybe they were giving out death threats, that's quite strange. Maybe there was porridge. Maybe it was just like ice cream cones full of porridge and these three people have been queuing up. Okay, I might go with that, I think that's very strange. And actually, I'm thinking which one of these people would make the most unusual ice cream van person. I could see him doing it. Okay, I think this might work for me. I'm actually thinking live. So for me, my idea is going to be that the weird thing that's happening in this park is that 
there's an ice cream van pulled up and it's new and everyone was like, oh wow, a new ice cream van. But when they get there, the person who's giving it out is for one thing, a toddler. I'm gonna make it a three year old, but they speak with an adult's voice because that's strange. And they're very excitable and giddy. And here are the two customers and they want to help because they think it's a bit strange. This is going to be very weird. Okay, mine is going to be an ice cream van is selling some random stuff. Feel free to have that if you want, but actually your own ideas will definitely be much better. I'm not going to make you pause this. I'm just going to sit here and I'm just going to think about other things. Come up with some ideas. What are some strange things that might happen in the park? To bring three characters together. Maybe jot it down on a piece of paper. Oh good, I like that. Yes, good one. <laughs> yeah, that one's quite funny. That's a good idea. Well done. Good funny. Good funny idea. Okay, that's a bit too strange. I'm only joking, of course. Okay. If you need more time, just pause it. You know where the button is. But we're gonna start thinking about how we might develop this into a little piece of writing and just get started. Okay, so the way that you want to develop this is in large part down to you in terms of which kind of writing you're in the mood to write here. As I say, the focus is more about developing three-dimensional characters, characters who don't just feel like you're saying, there was a boy he had on a football shirt. He liked shopping and football. Like it's boring and it's boring for you. It's boring for whoever reads it and it's boring for you to write it. But if you can make your characters come to life, it's better for everybody. So it could be in a comic book style, couldn't it? It could be a play script. I think I'm going to go straight in as if it's maybe a short story or a fic, you know, a piece of like fiction writing, like a chapter book. But it's going to start with the dialogue. Sometimes we split planning, sorry, we split the plot and the dialogue. But actually sometimes the dialogue can be the thing which leads the plot and that's where we're going here. So I'm thinking of my kind of merry character he might be the one to speak first here so he's going to say now then because i'm making him very yorkshire now then aren't you a i'm gonna what would he say to her so i'm imagining that ice cream van there's like a three-year-old girl who's serving and he thinks it's all really kind of funny and he's trying to be friendly and nice about it in a jolly sort of way but she's kind of got I don't know, some kind of evil in her heart. I don't know what's going on. She's going to go, now then. Now. Now then. Uh, what would we say now then? Now then. What brings you? What brings you to our park? He's trying to be friendly. And then I want her to say something really weird and him not hear, and then ask her to repeat, because I find that quite funny. Now then, what brings you to our park? And she's going to say, vengeance. I like that. Vengeance. I feel like I might have spelled that incorrectly, but I don't suppose that matters at this point. For me, I know it's a bit of an unusual approach. I've not even named my characters yet. I'm just thinking about literally what they're going to say to each other. So she might say vengeance. Now, I don't think he would say pardon, because that might seem a bit rude. He'd still try and do it in a friendly way. So how might he say it? He might say, hi. I'm just going to say, I'm sorry, my dear, or something like that. I'm sorry. I'm going to say my duck. I'm sorry, my duck. I didn't hear you. I'm sorry, my duck. I didn't catch that. I 
and then I'm gonna say she cleared her throat now in that context it makes you think that she's gonna clear her throat because she's gonna say something but another way in which you clear your throat might be to spit and I like this idea that this character is like strange and a bit unpredictable so I'm gonna suggest here that she's gonna clear her throat as if she's gonna reply but actually she's just gonna spit somewhere I'm sorry my duck I didn't catch that and then she she cleared her throat all over the window of all over the window of the ice cream van. That's hideous. And then what would she say? She's going to have a dramatic pause. She's going to say, I said. Porridge. And then I need that other guy to pop up. So they've been having their little conversation. Where have they gone? Buying some sort of ice cream. Serving. And then maybe he's just in the queue getting quietly frustrated in the background because he is so peeved after all. So what might he say? Where's my stuff gone? Right. I said porridge. And then I'm going to say another customer stirred behind another customer stirred in the queue. I like the idea of him stirring. You know, it's not saying that he said something necessarily. He's just kind of aggressively, silently shuffling, like wants the point to be known, but doesn't want to make it clear. I must admit, I sometimes do that. I'm, I'm a tutter. I like to tut. I said porridge, another customer stirred in the queue. Ridiculous. He muttered. Okay, I've set up my scene. Now, this is not a long piece, is it? But I'm something that I feel kind of happy with at the moment is I feel like I've got something of my character's character, like their personality, already in these start, in these little stages. Let me get some highlighters. We all love a highlighter, don't we? So, well, this have dried out. So, this bit here. Now then, what brings you to our park? It's said in a friendly way. And that now then, it's like a colloquialism. It's just the way people actually speak in that area. My little odd toddler character says vengeance. What a brilliant first word. Now he has to stay true to his character, so he's not going to say, I beg your pardon, what did you just say? He's going to say, I'm sorry, my duck, I didn't catch that. She clears her throat all over the window of the ice cream van. How vile. And then she did, I said porridge. If she said, I said porridge, it wouldn't sound as rude. But I'm inferring here, I said dot 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 porridge. Like she knows that she's being provocative here. I said porridge. Another customer stirred in the queue. Ridiculous, he muttered. Okay. So it's easy to write these characters because they're all parts of who I am, I think. I've got nicer sides than this. I hope I've not done myself a huge disservice. I've made three absolute monsters by the looks of it. But it's fun to write with because I can imagine how they'd feel. Let's have a think. So I think this might be a good time to hand over to you, really. So what we've been looking at then is the idea that sometimes when we create characters in our writing, the characters are not very... I don't know, what's the word I might use? I don't want to say three-dimensional again. I'm going to say they're not very meaty. They don't feel real. I sometimes like to see that the characters, you can just imagine them. They jump off the page. You can imagine them just walking past the window as you're sitting at home. In order to do that, we're going to experiment by thinking about who we are and the different kinds of personalities that make us who we are. And we're going to channel them into characters. 
So to be very clear for you, one thing that you could experiment with, with this writing task, think about three or four different sides to your personality and do a drawing of them. Turn them into a character. Exaggerate. It's a good way to start. It's easier to exaggerate and then to calm them down later on. So if you sometimes get a little bit annoyed by small things, make your little character someone who gets incredibly annoyed by small things. If your character is someone who is generally quite kind, make them like obscenely kind. Make them incredibly kind. Make them somebody who would always go out of their way to do something for somebody else. Play with those extremes and then start to kind of mute it down later. Once you've got your four characters, imagine a scene like I showed you on here. Where's it gone? Imagine a scene where we've got our characters meeting in an unusual setting. We're going to just say the park, but the setting is that something odd has happened. In my scenario, I had that there was just an ice cream van there and it was selling something strange. And I just played with that idea as a way to develop my characters. You might choose something different. I think you'd prefer it if you would. Think about, out of those three characters, if they were to bump into each other, who would be the first to speak and what might they say? And what might the weird event be? Just play with that as a way to develop your characters. Now, for you, you're going to be working on this most likely at home if schools are closed. So what I'm going to suggest that you do, enjoy it, take your time with it. There's certainly no rush. You probably get in a lot of homework anyway. When you've written this, when you're happy with it, maybe it's something you could pass on to an adult. Maybe if you are working with your teachers through school, you could pass it on to your teacher if they're the one who's suggested that you do these activities. Or you could pass it on to your parents. And as a message to the parents and the teachers themselves, if your students or your children have done some interesting writing and you'd like to send it on to me, you can find my contact details on the website. I'll only be engaging with adults in that vehicle, of course. So that would give us an opportunity to share that writing more widely. So maybe if you write something here, the next time you, you see one of these videos, I'll be able to start by sharing a piece of your writing. How exciting. OK, I'm going to leave you to write now. Over to you. Enjoy. See you later. Can't wait to read it.